Orc Digital. Mordifius Entertainment. Mord Mordifius. Mordifius. Oh, look at the little Cthulhu icon. We're playing Achtung. Cthulhu Tactics. Yeah, sure. Let's just make today a double Cthulhu day. Also, I just spoiled, uh, what, what video is coming later today. Ha <laughs> ha! Click. Oh. Oh, it's good to check for- this game actually starts off really loud. Calm down a little bit. Alright. Let's, uh, just real quick make sure that you guys have some- let's... What do you- why- well, stop doing that. Why do so many games want to go to a weird resolution that I don't render at? I need to find out if something's happening on my computer that's making weird shit happen. Yeah, calm down. I think I think it's generally good to restrict how much the game's doing to frame rate and whatnot because I'm running other stuff, and so I don't want those to be fighting with each other if I can avoid it. No mention of subtitles anywhere. Maybe just as maybe that's just not a choice. A lot of games are just all voiced anyway. I mean, all text anyway. We're playing it on is normal. late 1944, and after the D-Day landings and months of hard fighting, the Allies close in on Germany's border. Soon, the Nazis plan to launch the audacious counterattack through the Ardennes forest, known as Operation Watch on the Rhine, hoping to split the Allied armies and hurl their circling enemies back into the sea. Supplementing the Third Reich's conventional troops are the darker forces of the Nazi occult, the sinister Black Sun, wielders of arcane magics and tamers of captive horrors, and their bitter rivals, the Nachtwolf, the Night Wolves, who harness advanced experimental weaponry to rule the battlefield. Both have recently been observed in the Ardennes. And in a quiet, seemingly forgotten corner of the forest, known locally as Arduino, other eldritch forces also begin to stir. When the local resistance sent word to London that a terrifying new secret weapons facility is being built beneath the forest surface, the Allies' own occult forces, Britain's Section M and the US's Majestic, send an airborne task force to investigate. But the message is a trap, and an entire parachute battalion is lured to its death in a brutal ambush. Only Charlie Company of Badger's Commandos, under the command of Captain Eric Badger Harris and U.S. Sergeant Brandon Carter, survive after being blown off course by mysterious winds. Fleeing into the arms of the forest, they go to ground in the abandoned Chateau Limoges. There, they manage to get a garbled radio message back to HQ. And in response, London sends two of its finest special operatives, French resistance leader Ariane Dubois and Corporal Aki the I Singh. Their mission, rendezvous with Charlie Company and find out exactly what the Nazis are up to in this ancient woodland known as the Forest of Fear. Mademoiselle Dubois, Corporal Singh, your orders are to make your way behind enemy lines, then proceed through the forest to the appointed rendezvous point, where you will meet Captain Harris, Sergeant Carter, and any other survivors from Operation Fallen Angels. You will engage and defeat any enemy forces you encounter en route, secure a forward operating base, and then report back with your findings. And so we're right to it. Huh. The voice acting and cutscene and everything are way quieter than the rest of the game. I'm probably going to edit that to make them normalized and everything, but it was way quieter than the starting menu and way quieter than this pop-up sound that just came up. So you move the camera with WASD, rotate with QEs. Okay, really standard controls for camera, but welcome. We're looking at a top-down turn-based tactics game, it looks like. So, right That's mouse button to, to move. What's that? What's going on here? Certain tiles are interactive. You move to the tile. Move sin to the- yeah. Moving. Let's try interacting with it now. Leave this to me. Keep an eye open for any commandos who dropped in. We've not heard back from them. I suspect an ambush, Captain Hill. 
AP and exploration mode. Each character has an individual resource called action points. Characters start with 12 AP. AP is used for movement and actions. During exploration mode, movement doesn't cost any AP. But this is comparable somewhat to the last uh, turn-based, top-down, tile-oriented game we played. Uh, Mutant Year, Year Zero, which was that... It had the vaguely XCOM-looking presentation overall, but it in incorporated this idea of being able to actively walk around a map until you start a fight with, with a ghost over here. Combat. The direction in which your units are looking matters. Your units each have a reveal cone, which reveals the dark areas of the map as the shroud, or known as the shroud. Set the dust, uh, direction in which your characters are looking with the mouse, right mouse bumper to confirm. Okay. So we're straight up gonna be kind of, yeah, so we can't see behind us anymore because no one's looking that way. So that's, uh, that's a whole new system to worry about. But, uh, during combat, movement and actions deplete AP. Move Ariana to the highlighted cell, and then angle her reveal her reveal cone using left mouse bumper. They said right. I thought I said right last time, not left. But this one says left. I mean, pointing at the bad guys. Seems straightforward. Now we can see them. All right, and then shoot at the highlighted enemy. One fire weapon, twenty percent hit chance. Great. I believe in you. Oh, damn it. Believing in people is not enough for them to actually succeed at things. I forgot. Units in cover gain a defense bonus. Cover is shown by a shield. A broken shield is when you, the cover is useless because you're flanked. You dummy. You big dummy. Dummy. Next Enemies are hidden by the shroud until revealed by one of your units. When revealed, you can see an enemy's identity as well as extra info, such as their health. Unrevealed enemies are more difficult to hit. Move sign to the highlighted uh, tile and use your reveal cone to reveal the enemy. So this, this is gonna be close enough, I guess? Oh yeah, you can see that clearly inside the cone. Not the other one, though. They're still gonna be out of range. What are you? Nachtwolf Grunt. So Nightwolf. The Nightwolf rank is- oh, I didn't get to read that. Your me your name means Nightwolf. Are you a person? Uh, where's his face? Can I see his face? Does he have a human face or a skeleton face or a gas mask? I can't tell from this angle. Not quite. Uh, enemies inside a unit's reveal cone are unshrouded. These en enemies are easier to hit and are likely- more likely to miss when attacking. Oh, they're weaker against me. Interesting. I have a 50% chance to hit now, which is still not amazing. Not the shots you usually go for. I get the feeling that these aren't even dice rolls right now, though. I get the feeling that during the, the tutorial, stuff's just gonna happen as expected. Overwatch. Units can cover an area with protective fire using Overwatch. Your unit will attack any enemy attempting to move or shoot in the highlighted area. To enter Overwatch, click on the Overwatch icon on the action bar and choose an area to cover. Enter Overwatch and include the nearby enemy, the cone of attack. So, so far it's very XCOM-like. You have the chance to hit uh, stuff being set up, the turn-based combat, the presentation of the health bars over the heads and a lot of other details like that, the direction-based uh, cover that reduces chance of hitting, uh, line of sight, stuff like that, like, like stuff about like, how far you can see in Fog of War, which was definitely an element used in the XCOM games, even Overwatch. But the, uh, the... The shroud blocking the identity of the enemies is a new mechanic to think about. A new variation of the stealth mechanics, much like how that was what, what uh, Mutant New Zero was playing with, was the idea of being able to use stealth in a game like this. Uh, in addition to that, Overwatch is apparently location-based, so that changes things a bit too. So here we would hope that he'd walk into my Overwatch range. Oh, he's looking at him standing up. I'd be a little worried that maybe he's more vulnerable to fire at that point. A unit cannot move, attack, or use actions after they use Overwatch. Select end turn to end your current turn. Right, so at, so like in those other systems, we had access to both characters at once, and I could switch between them. 
but you're you're out of action so end turn see we found the weakness of the germans it's bullets you shoot them and then they stop living they don't stand a chance they shot at me and they seemed to miss but i gained stress points so that's a new mechanic to figure out is that my stress meter because it's almost full yeah that must be my stress meter luck and health luck acts as a shield against damage luck is fully restored at the end of combat Ooh. So I have an extra health bar that's blue outside my normal health bar and that blocks damage at first. We must be... I, I, I'm getting the feeling that since that recovers after damage, we probably have to go through several consecutive fights with these characters in the campaign on a regular basis, and that's why you have to deal with... Uh, this, that's why you have this luck resource that's like the regenerating shields in Halo or something like that. But you have below that a normal health bar that itself probably doesn't regenerate anyway near, nearly as well probably you need actual first aid or something once a character's luck is run out additional damage reduces a character's health health can only be refilled by med kits or completing the mission characters suffer stress from taking damage being attacked by unknown or eldritch entities so as you'd expect there's a madness meter just like in a some elements of D&D have uh, madness points, and then of course, Darkest Dungeon had its stress meter and was very Lovecrafty in, in what it was going for. Uh, or by seeing their allies become gravely hurt or knocked out. When a character's stress meter is full, they'll panic and act, er act erratically, which can both harm you and the enemy. Always keep an eye on your character's stress level. Hello, friendo. Would you like to die? Enemies don't have any luck. Any damage you do to them is applied directly to their health. Shoot the highlighted enemy. You don't say. Well, 50% hit chance doesn't you mean 100% hit chance? You just won that coin flip three times. Your squad has a special shared resource called Momentum, MP. MP can be used for character skills and provide additional movement beyond the range governed by a character's remaining AP. Use one momentum to sprint Ariane to the highlighted tile. But I currently have two momentum points. They build up on the top of the screen up here. So, okay, so it tells you... I'm going around to... Oh, well, I think normally it would tell me how much it would cost me to move around, but right now it's just giving me this X mark because the game will not let me do anything besides what it's telling me to do. But you can see the pop up there. It's like, that'll, that'll cost you 12 movement. Or 12 AP and 1 MP. Oh, well, that seems to be the wall, so let's look this way. That other direction really seems like it was a dead end. Oh. Well, it would have been good to face that guy, I guess. Alright. Each character has the ability to fire a secondary weapon at the cost of one momentum. Okay, so I can fire secondary using the momentum point at this guy. Get out of here, Nightwolf. Damn. Good We're good at coin tosses. Wasn't that a- that was- that was a 45% chance to hit, wasn't it? At the start of every turn, MP is generated based on the character with the highest leadership. MP can also be generated during a turn by landing critical hits or by specific character skills. Continue to explore the level. So now I'm allowed to play play. How I'd like to play. Okay. Cool. So, there must be stats. Ooh, there we go. There's the stats screen. Ariane Dubois. Look at the freaking thing on its shoulder. Like, we're just going right in with the weirdness. Where's your leadership skill? Leadership 2. Plus 2 momentum points per turn. Nice. Plus 25 stress points. That's how much stress they can go through before they're in trouble, basically. How about you? You also have 2 leadership, so we're tied at the moment. Less stress meter for him, though. So we get two stress points every turn. Heading out. I guess we're not in combat, so I just walk around now. Go poking around. I see mushrooms. It's a nice enough visual style. I like looking at this game. The shroud Heading looks a little out. odd to me. Carter and Harris should rendezvous with you in the forest. They're robust fellows and should still be alive, Captain Hill. 
Glad he's got confidence in those people to be alive, but not the rest of the crew. Hey, there they are. So how about them leadership points, huh? Oh. Three. That's three momentum now when that guy's alive. And two. So it seems the leader of the group is Captain Harris. At least they're the best at leadership. Moving out. Let's keep poking forward till something bad happens and we all get mowed down by German machine gun fire. Moving Hooray. Out. The French resistance is active in that area. Harassing supply lines, etc. Their handiwork should be obvious. Captain Hill. Where is your... Am I supposed to be saying... Are we saying that I'm finding those documents around? He's just leaving us weird notes in the middle of the war? What's the context for those notes? What could they be? Could they be German soldiers? Could they be Cthulhu's? An army of Cthulhu's? Uh, they, could they be using Cthulhu tactics? Let's get behind cover before bad things happen to me. Uh, that's maximum movement when using AP. And then yellow is how far we can move using momentum. I actually can't really see how far I can move with the momentum because I straight up can't see uh, that far. What if I do this? What if I run into cover and flank that dude? Then how much trouble is he in? He's not flanked, is he? No, he's flanked. I used double my AP, so I can't shoot normally, but I can shoot with the secondary weapon. Or I can do an overwatch. Which will be flanking and also will take somebody out. Let's see. To reveal these guys. Oh, you're in trouble now, boyo. But, oh, did I move too far? Right, I moved so far that I can't do anything else. At most, you can change the angle of your direction. Alright, well, now everyone's revealed at least. The firing weapon costs six, so I need to use less than six in my approach. Wow, I'm actually not in a good position to be able to do a lot of these things. Whereas Overwatch is four, so. All right, I see that's valid. It seems rather useful to go go running in, take cover, using 4 AP, face the enemies, then activate Overwatch, because it uses less AP than the other attack. Insufficient momentum. Oh, I misread that. You spend 2 MP by doing Overwatch. Those are the hotkeys, whoops. Whoops, I, cor I correctly read that as being six, and then I read that as being four, but that's the hotkey. Boy, that was a mistake. So you can only- so no, you can only use Overwatch with momentum. You actually can't use Overwatch at all otherwise. Interesting. Unless it varies by character. Alright, well it's gonna be a little hard to get these guys to do any actions this turn after, what, after the mistakes I've made. Maybe if I just shoot from here, 60% hit chance? It's not bad. Wow. Really, across the board, it's a way better hit chance than I'd expect. I think one of the surprises is that you have way more attack range than I was expecting in this game. I'm gonna take cover right here for 4 AP. Which will leave me enough AP to actually shoot with this character. Let's shoot back, guy. Nope, not winning those coin tosses anymore. Alright, well, that was not the most encouraging turn on my part. Oh no! I missed that also. Good job. She really does have like a little purple gremlin. You just try to melee over a sandbag pile? Oh, you're overwatching. I'm behind full cover. There we go. So nobody has done any damage to anybody else. We're really nailing it. All right, well, so that guy's an overwatch. I should try to shoot him with somebody who's not currently in his line of sight. 
That seems like the way to go. Melee, reload the Blaven Carbine. Now I can shoot one more time first. 55% chance to hit. Let's go for it. Wow, that must have been a crit. Because that was damage. I could re-enter Overwatch. Just to spite these guys. Wait, does Overwatch work? I just realized that guy... The character's weapon has been used. I don't know if their Overwatch will actually work at that point. Because they don't have ammo? That'll be embarrassing. 60% chance to hit still. I'll take it. Next time, Charlie. Next time. Next time, Charlie. He just doesn't like people named Charlie. I don't know. Got a bit of a fixation. That's very low hit chance. At the end of a long string of me not hitting things mostly. That will cost me 10 AP, which is enough that I won't be able to actually do anything afterwards. I can approach, but it doesn't actually help me hit them, does it? What if I did double overwatch? Then that guy's extra screwed if he comes out of cover. Oh yeah. Damn it, that's still eight. I really wanted to be able to get into range just to do something. I can do that with four, then do a melee and then a shot, like they did. They seem to think it was a good idea. Let's try a melee attack. 60% chance to do some damage. Cool, thanks. Love you too. Cool! It's cool. We're really making up for all those coin tosses we won during this tutorial. Alright. Uh, let's end turn. Somebody please try to move. Oh, thank you. Oh my god! Nobody hits in this game. Is this a Nazi regime? Because everybody's aiming like stormtroopers. Uh, uh, it's a Star Wars joke, but they were named after the Nazi stormtroopers. Making the comparison of the Empire being space Nazis not even clever because it's just literally what they were. You're in Overwatch, but you can't see me. How do I abuse that? By using up all my AP and then not being able to do anything else. Hooray. Out. Hey, asshole. Stop. Stop that thing you do. Yay. Ooh, he's staggered. That's a mechanic I didn't know about. This unit will lose half their AP during the next turn or all remaining AP if it's currently their turn. Ooh. Well, that's a mechanic I didn't know about. So fun. Overwatch. <laughs> I overused this mechanic. Oh, wait, he's still in Overwatch. Escape to cancel. I need to try to kill this guy if I can, but I can only do it if I reload unless I fire my secondary weapon, in which case I have a not great chance of hitting. Who cares? Okay, cool, thanks. Love you too. This one. Somebody has to make a, make a hit eventually. Or they don't, I mean, I, I'm not your boss. Time, Holy crap. <laughs> Alright. I mean, I don't really want to trigger the Overwatch if I can avoid it. You currently have 12 AP. It cost me 10 to get that close, damn it. I wanted to melee, but I can't quite make it in there to just melee the guy. Yeah. Oh, now you still have enough AP to shoot. Surprisingly. Cool! Thanks! <laughs> We're never gonna shoot a person ever again. <laughs> it's never gonna happen again. It's over. We're done hitting people with shots. Wait, do you need a reload? 
Yes. Do you get a... Does meleeing cut trigger an overwatch? Yes, it... Apparently, yes. But it's okay. No one can hit. So that includes that guy. Cool. <laughs> I mean, now he's out of overwatch. I can just melee this guy again. Turns out you can spam melee. Didn't know that. <laughs> just You can just melee someone three times in a row. Alright, well that seems very useful mechanically. He doesn't even use up ammo, although she has infinite ammo on that weapon. Or um, that might be her sidearm. Uh, let's end turn. Overwatch expired. I guess being point blank didn't trigger Overwatch. He was pointing his gun straight at the guy in Overwatch, but I guess because his destination tile was the one, the first one he w walked into, took him out of the Overwatch range, probably making it not effective. Let's see. Let's take the guys behind you. 40% hit chance. Is that because of the line of sight problems? Alright, now has that hit chance. That's what I thought. I swear to god. <laughs> ah, kill him. Thank you. And another. Combat ended. Enemies defeated. I'm gonna say, uh, combat can use a little bit more fanfare when it's over. Just a, you know, some kind of musical sting just to be like, yeah, you did it, buddy. Even a little bit, even though that's not the end of the mission. Like that. Yeah, like that. Like, they, they do a, sing, a sting at the end of the thing, but like, you know, I just want to fight. Be like, give me a little sound. It's like, yeah, you won the fight. Not just like, tick, 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 tick. Such is the nature of war. Uh, got 100 experience, so evidently we do have an experience system. But we're not going to see what it does yet. Well, I mean, they have stats. They surely go up over time. So we're on our way to party level one. Everyone in the party is collectively level zero. Interesting. Mills Bomb. A simple hand grenade which sprays steel shrapnel on detonation. Used by British forces since the First World War. Listen to that music. Oh, it's a live show. Leveling up. New skills are available for your characters. These can be purchased on the skills tree uh, screen within the character dossier. Select a portrait to use... Yeah. Hello. Character skills are... Yeah. A loadout. So you can change what they, what they actually have on them. Hello. The character skill tree comprises three main branches with three combo branches, each containing purchasable active and passive skills. Skills can be purchased with skill points which are earned by completing missions and gaining XP. Each character has a unique starting skill which costs one. Available skill points missing! SP. <laughs> Oops. Information on the currently selected skill are displayed here, including many associates. It's, it's, it's a passive skill is a buff. That's it's, I know what a passive is. Uh, let's just let's get let's get to reading the screen because we're about done with our how much time we have for an episode. Life drain deal damage equal to half your willpower stat uh, to target enemy. That's all it does. It just deals damage based on your willpower. It doesn't say it heals you. That's weird. Whenever there's a life drain skill in a game, it always heals you for the amount you're taking from the enemy, but it doesn't actually say that. So that's 3 MP. Plus 1 base speed. This will mean that the character removes an additional space for every 2 AP spent. Ah. A lot of extra movement, actually. Spend 1 AP to move up to double your speed in a set piece of... to a... to a piece of cover. Additional cover bonus. Pick a location unobscured by the shroud to teleport this character to that location. Damn. 
But you need all of those skills first. So that's a high level skill. I'm just kind of picking some random ones to look around. Ah, heal this character for half the damage dealt by life drain. So one quarter of your willpower then. Because this is half your willpower to begin with. So there's the part that makes life drain actually life drain. Uh, your guns are better. Draining shot. Make a ranged attack with your main weapon. If it hits, then the enemy also suffers a life drain. Ooh. A ranged attack that triggers life drain, which then triggers siphon. So you have synergy combos there. Trick shot. Make an attack with your main weapon against an enemy outside of line of sight. Oh. Weird. All right. Dead shot over here. Anyway, this has been uh, Actung Cthulhu Tactics. It's a Lovecraftian war game. Uh, we didn't actually see much Lovecraftian stuff, but you know, if you get as you get further in, I'm sure it gets crazier and crazier due to the Cthulhu being in the literal title. As per usual, thanks for the developers for sending the code in so I could play this here, and if you want to check out the game for yourself, there's a link to the Steam page in the description. See you guys next time.